Now, the second type of flow is turbulent flow. Here you've got a flow where it's much more random and more chaotic in terms of where the street, or those particles of fluid are going. You've got ver uh, velocities in radial direction as well as along the flow of the pipe, okay? And it's much more chaotic. Okay, it's regular, irregular. Okay, you've got lots of mixing going on. So, for example, in, in taps and shower um, valves and things like that, they're trying to encourage turbulent flow because you get lots of mixing together and the flow that comes out of the tap or the shower is a nice constant temperature, okay? If you don't have any mixing, then you get hot and cold and all sorts of things going on. Um, so you've got flow in the radial direction, which means in the perpendicular direction to the direction of the pipe. And the example of that was smoke billowing out of a chimney, okay? You've got smoke coming out of a chimney and often it interacts with the air around it and you end up getting turbulent flow, okay? So it's not a nice streamline going straight upwards. You've got all sorts of you know, um, eddies going on, okay? And we, we say that any flow with a Reynolds number over 3,000 is going to be turbulent, okay? That gap between 2,300 and 3,000, it's a bit, you know, a bit, it could be laminar, it could be turbulent, we're not quite sure, okay? But any of the problems that you have, either will be definitely below 2,000 or will be definitely above 3,000. We won't give you a problem where it's between the two. With turbulent flow, we went through the whole, quite a long derivation, okay? And again, it's detailed in your books, but the final result is what's important. And the pressure drop for a turbulent flow is FL upon D times, what, times the dynamic pressure, okay? Dynamic pressure being one half rho C squared, okay? Where... L is the pipe length, okay, we know how long the pipe is. We've got the pipe diameter. <coughs> Obviously, C is the velocity, and then we've got at this F term, which is what we know is the friction factor, okay? Now, to determine this friction factor, you have to know a couple of things. You need to know, first off, the Reynolds number, okay? So there's the equation for the Reynolds number, okay? And you also need to know this term called the relative roughness. Okay, and the relative roughness is this epsilon term, okay, which, this term here, which is different for different materials that are used in pipes. Okay, so for concrete, it's going to be different for steel, which is going to be different from copper. Okay, and so depending on the material that your pipe is made out of, you'll get a different value for epsilon, and then depending on your diameter, you get a different value for the relative roughness. Okay, the Reynolds number, obviously that, Depends on the density of the fluid, how fast the fluid is going, and the diameter of the pipe, okay? Any increase in all of those will increase your Reynolds number, okay? And, and that's divided by the viscosity. So if you've got a very high viscosity, you're going to have a low Reynolds number. And if you've got a very high density and a low viscosity, you're going to have a higher um, Reynolds number. The larger the pipe, the higher the Reynolds number, okay? The larger the speed, the higher the Reynolds number. And so all of those terms, they determine what's known as the Reynolds number, and we've got relative roughness. And to determine the friction factor, F, okay, you need to know both of those terms with one condition. We use the MIDI chart to determine the friction factor. Okay, and the MIDI chart you've all got in your notes. I think it's page uh, 23. And it'd be a good idea for you to go through the practice of finding friction factors on the MIDI chart, okay? Um, I think in lecture four, or lecture three even, okay, I gave some examples for you to go through and find out what the Reynolds number are. And so if you go to the handout on blackboards, you can get those values. You can check that you can work out the, um, where, how to determine the friction factor from the Moody chart. And the Moody chart is on page 23 of your handout, okay? It looks like that. And it looks like this, okay? So there's the Moody chart. You've got at the bottom, you've got your Reynolds number, okay? Along the sides, you've got the relative roughness. And what you do is you pick the, a point on that chart based on your Reynolds number and your relative roughness, okay? And once you've got that point, so I've, got, I've picked a point here, okay? You read across to the friction factor on that side, okay? And that will give you the value for the friction factor. This is a logarithmic scale, and often those values will be between two points on here that are identified between, say, here and here, and you'll need to sort of guesstimate where between those points you are, okay? And, you know, okay, your answers may not be exact, okay, because you might get it slightly off, 
or slightly different from what we reckon it to be, okay? But that's fine, don't worry. As long as you say what um, friction factor you've got and it's not wildly out, okay, then obviously you'll get the marks for that. So that's the Moody diagram. Like I said, I recommend you go through this and try and practice to find some numbers, okay? There are some, obviously, in your uh, questions in the, in the um, handout. You can go through that. Um, <coughs> but yes, it's you know, well worth mastering this. <coughs>